everyone, and welcome to Handmade Hero, the show where we code a complete game live on stream. Uh, I am going to start today by just mentioning something very briefly, because I get asked this a lot on Handmade Hero, and I thought that I would just kind of give the specific example so people understand why I uh, take the position I normally do on a lot of things. So... Uh, if you remember a while back on Handmade Hero, while we were in the middle of trying to work, Visual Studio popped up a dialog box asking us um, if we wanted to fill out a survey. And so we did fill out a survey. And uh, we mentioned a bunch of things. I was like, here are all the things that are problematic with Visual Studio. And, you know, there's a big long list of them for the way that we use it, which is just as a debugger. Uh, so we didn't have any feedback about like project editing or any of those or text editor because we don't use any of that. But we use it to step through in the debugger because it's the most efficient debugger right now on Windows. So that's what we use. Uh, and so we filled out that survey. Now, uh, oddly enough, and this was somewhat shocking to me because uh, and I, I suppose, but to, to be honest, bodes slightly well, at least for Microsoft. Uh, they actually called me. Uh, and wanted to talk about it. So uh, that's a good thing. Uh, it's the first time they've ever listened to anything, to the best of my knowledge, uh, from somebody who was trying to give them feedback. So I guess that's a plus. Uh, but one of the things that happened is they were like, could you update to the latest version? And I was like, because you know, cause they were like, um, you know, some of the things that you're talking about, we want to be able to help with. And they said that, like, they now have, in the latest version, ability to take a trace of uh, the state of Visual Studio so you can submit bug reports more easily or things like that. So it's like, okay. Um, so, uh, as you know, my normal policy is once I install a developer tool, I don't update it uh, till the end of the project. And the reason that I've said many times for doing this is because usually it, it uh, goes very poorly. Usually the tool gets worse when you update it. Uh, oftentimes the update breaks things, um, and so on. And so what I thought I'd show you is this is what happened when I went to go install the latest version. I clicked on their update button, uh, and it couldn't update itself, right? Uh, it's an incredibly simple program, Visual Studio. All it is, it, it's just an editor and, you know, it's, it's just a, it's just an editor. That's all it is, right? Uh, you know, it should be an executable on a drive. Uh, that's really all it would have to have, two or three executables, maybe one for the compiler, one for the linker, one for the uh, uh, IDE. Um, but of course it's not because the way that it's developed is, is this huge sprawling mass of millions of COM components and DLLs and C-sharp and uh, SQL server. I'm not joking, there's actually an SQL server that gets installed just around Visual Studio. Um, and as a result, even something as simple as updating the application is fraught with peril. Uh, the chance that an update will succeed on Visual Studio is is almost zero. Most of the time when I do it, it doesn't work, and that was exactly the case this time. So I've only tried to update it one time, uh, and here's what happened, right? Uh, so what did I have to do? Exactly what you normally have to do in this circumstance. I had to get rid of the whole thing and reinstall it again uh, from scratch, which thankfully worked. Sometimes that doesn't even work, uh, but it worked this time. Um, but that was just a cautionary tale and sort of more examples of what I'm talking about. Nowadays, it's just not safe to upgrade your development tools. It will cost you actual work hours that you could have been doing something productive uh, to update your tools. And of course, as you will see when we start using Visual Studio, we don't get any benefit. Uh, in this case, there's perhaps some benefit to the developers of the software because now we can report bugs. Whether or not they fix them, I don't know. Uh, so whether or not there'll ever be any benefit to us is questionable. Um, but there's certainly no immediate benefit to us because they haven't upgraded anything that we need. So, uh, yeah, word to the wise, don't ever update your development tools. If they're working, leave them as they are because the chances that you'll get anything uh, improved is very low and the chances that something will break, very high. All right, uh, with that public service announcement out of the way, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go pop over here to something that was brought to my attention on the pre-stream, but I wanted to wait till the actual stream uh, to take a look at it because I think it's probably something uh, that we uh, that everyone out there will want to download if they're on an NVIDIA card uh, like we are at the moment, which is that 
uh, I had been previously using Insight's plugin for Visual Studio. Now, I don't like the Insight plugin for Visual Studio, not because I don't like Insight. I like Insight. I just don't like the plugin to Visual Studio. I don't like using Visual Studio. I only use it because uh, it's the only debugger that I really have on Windows that I've found that's effective. Uh, but I would much rather have a standalone application purpose-built and more reliable, hopefully, than Visual Studio to do graphics debugging. And Insight, if I remembered correctly, and I could be wrong with this, used to be that way, and then they changed it to only having a Visual Studio plugin. And I've never cared for that, uh, but, you know, it was the only way to use it, so that's how I used it. Uh, but it was brought to my attention on the pre-stream that they have just released a new standalone um, debugger for NVIDIA cards and profiler. Uh, and that, to me, sounds absolutely fantastic. That's exactly what I would want. Uh, I don't know if it's any good because I haven't used it yet, but I'm assuming that it's probably at least as good as the Visual Studio plugin, hopefully. Uh, and it certainly looks better than the Visual Studio plugin. I don't know if that's any indication of the screenshots. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about being able to replace that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and download that. As far as I know, there are no special criteria for you to have to download it other than having to have an NVIDIA card. Uh, I don't think there's anything else you in particular would have to do. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and give it a shot here. Uh, you can see it's just developer.nvidia.com Insight Graphics. I hit the Download Now button. Uh, this downloads list on the side, I assume, is all we really need. I don't know. We may have to update our graphics driver because it may only work with the latest version uh, of the graphics driver, so that's probably fine because I think that actually has been getting updated uh, anyway by itself. I'm not quite sure what's installed on this machine at the moment in terms of auto-updating drivers, but I feel like Windows 10 tends to install those. I could be wrong about that. Uh, uh, all right, well, I take it back. I thought it was something you could just download. Apparently you can't. Um, I do have one of these so I can grab it. Uh, by uh, logging in on a machine where I've got a password. Uh, I don't remember one at the moment. Um, so, all right, well, here, let me see if I've got that here. Uh, I don't understand why they do that sort of stuff. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, it seems like you'd just want everyone getting your program, right? Uh, but I don't know. Like, why put up barriers? Like, what, what, you know, they're obviously developing on an NVIDIA card, isn't that? what you want i don't know uh, so let's see if i can log in over here on this machine i think i might have a password uh, because i think we had to do this for the original one uh, don't quote me on that but i'm going to try i seem to have a password written down here let's see if i can log in i well it's not it's not having a problem with my password, but it is having a problem with their login window, which apparently just doesn't work on Chrome. Oh, it's always an adventure, isn't it, folks? Uh, let's try Firefox. I am now trying to log in on Firefox. And I, I cannot log in on either of these browsers. And it's not, it doesn't like disallow my password or anything. It's just, you just can't log in. I don't know what to say. Is it just broken? I don't get it, folks. Well, I guess that's the end of that for now. Um... I mean, like, it's not even, the dialog box won't even accept it. It just won't work. Well, I wanted to try it. I couldn't try it. I tried to log in. I couldn't log in. Let me see what happens on this one. So if I'm on here and I do log in. So here's just me typing in. 
Yeah, see, it doesn't it doesn't do anything. This login window doesn't do anything. So it doesn't matter, I guess it doesn't matter what platform you're on. You just can't log in, period. So what's the deal? <clears throat> what's the deal, folks? Hey, NVIDIA, do you know how to program's website? Hey, here we go. Access is denied for this document. Interesting. It looks like someone forgot to set their access control origin. Let's take a look at what happened. Parser blocking cross-site script is invoked via document write. Guys, don't you know how to do web programming? What is wrong with you? Dear NVIDIA, uh, how do I uh, refresh that guy? Here we go. Let's get that login window going here. I also like, you get to here and it's like all the stuff goes away. Where is there? Okay, there it is. <laughs> ah, so let's take a look at who the offending person was here. So we've got assets.adobetm. Dot, uh, uh, Adobe DTM.com. So they maybe they, they must have made this site in like one of those like crappy uh, site maker things there. Uh, so where is that guy? Let's see. Here's the. So yeah, you can take a look at these here. Um, so where were these scripts getting accessed? Uh, yeah. So you can even see here these. These uh, these scripts don't have they don't have access control origin set, right? So you can't you can't yeah. The, these these scripts are not you can't cross site these scripts. If these scripts were stored on Nvidia's site, they would probably work okay, right? But they're coming from Adobe DTM.com, and you can't. Uh, execute things cross site like that unless you put the uh, access control origin uh, header in the response headers so I don't really know why they ever thought that login would work on a modern browser because you can't cross site script like that um, I don't, without installing a plugin, I'm not sure of any way to let it, that, to force it to let me add the access control origin header in there. You can, like, you can install uh, plugins for both Chrome uh, and Firefox to do access control allow origin by default and then you don't get uh, because it's a browser side check right so what ha what happens is when the browser goes to execute uh, a script or access anything really uh, it checks to see whether that thing came from the same domain or not and if it doesn't come from the same domain it looks in the headers to see whether it has an access control origin header that says that it's allowed to execute it and I assume that's what's going on here uh, Although I'm not 100% sure because uh, this part, it seems fine. This is just an old certificate, but it's not expired. It's not out of compliance yet. I'm not 100% sure that I've seen this exact error before. Because that error, this is just an advisory and isn't that specific one. So this document here, fail to read the local storage property for window access denied for this document. Where is handler.js actually from? You can see it in here. So here's where we're here's where it's at, right? <clears throat> uh, so this get window is returning the window from the window handler, right? And then they're trying to access this local storage, which in theory exists uh, at this point. 
so it's, it's not telling us that that's an illegal line of code, right? What it's telling us is that it's not allowed to access it. Uh, so basically this handler.js, which I don't know, this came from developer.nvidia.com. I'm not sure why it's not allowed to read it actually, because my cross site uh, assumption here, I guess, I guess the problem was that it came from cdn.auth0, I guess. Because I looked at the Adobe one, I thought the Adobe one came up here, but I guess that was just me looking at this one erroneously. I, I jumped to conclusions there. I looked up at this one, but actually this is not, this is not the problem, right? So it looks like this is actually the problem uh, and it isn't involved the Adobe one, but they are, they've moved uh, this auth zero min.js, that's on a CDN. DZ auth iframe.js is not on the CDN. So those are coming from two different top level domains. I don't know whether or not that's specifically what it's uh, complaining about because it's not saying exactly why. It simply says that the access is denied. So it could be because of that, or maybe it's not. Uh, let's take a look at the headers there. Um, so again, none of, none of these have, there's, there's a lot of weird stuff going on here. In fact, this is, this is, this is kind of, this is kind of borked in a lot of ways. So I don't really want to go down the rat hole of web programming that we already kind of have. So this is kind of borked as well, because as you can kind of see here, this is not an e-tagged resource, but it's, it's age is very high, right? Um, so this resource, for example, if it got updated, the CDN would still possibly push a really old version or the browser could cache it. Because as you can see, the cache control is allowing it to keep it for quite some time, but this is not a tagged file name. So typically like what you would do in this scenario, right? Is if you have something like a script that's being pushed to a CDN and it's allowed to be cached on the, on the client side, Typically what you do is you set the max age to something very high, um, but then you tag the name so that if you ever need to change this JavaScript, you update the name to a different name, right? Uh, and auth0.min.js, maybe that's tagged, like maybe the zero is the tag, but don't look tagged, right? Um, so I don't know about that. This, this looks pretty questionable. So I don't even know if we've got the latest version of this. It could be that one problem we're having is that we're getting served an old version of something uh, out of the CDN, for example, right? Uh, but it's hard to say. So, so I'm not really sure about that exactly. Uh, I'm not sure what the problem is if this is the latest one and there's just a, a you know, mistake there or, or what's going on. Uh, but anyway, so it's a bit, it's a bit wonky even to begin with, but it also doesn't have the access control origin headers set on it, which means that, um, none of these, you know, none of these things here are going to allow cross sites scripting of any kind. So I'm not sure how that would even be meant to work in the first place necessarily. It's hard to say. Um, where's this other guy? DZ auth iframe and keep in mind I'm not a web programmer so take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt here here we go uh, so DZ auth iframe yeah also doesn't have it also doesn't have the uh, the cross origin headers and it's an in an iframe which means it needs another header as well the iframe also needs a, spe a special thing to tell uh, to tell it that it allows cross site hmm so this is this is rough so i think our best bet since i don't think we're going to be able to edit the source code here because the source code isn't the problem uh it's the access control that's the problem which means that in order to get this to work, we're gonna have to inject some authorization in here in order to click on the login button. 
Uh, and so what I need is I need a way to allow the cross-site scripting. You can see, I mean, it's definitely a cross-site problem, even if I fail to, uh, if I fail to diagnose it 100% correctly. We at least know that it is a cross-site problem because you can see that it's a DOM exception um, on access denied, right, for the, a particular document. So I don't know any other way that that could occur. It's not saying that it can't find that property. It's not saying that something's wrong with the code. It's literally just saying that you're trying to access the property of a window that's a, that's uh, not in the same access ring uh, as you are, right? And I don't know any other way for that particular to happen other than cross-site, but there might be, right? It might be some more, if you were a web programmer, you might know some more subtle way that that can happen. Uh, so the question is, Chrome allow cross-site script access um, so, you know, the question is, can we just use uh, some simple way to turn it off, right? Uh, and, uh, and see what happens. So let's see here. So if we disable web security, it looks like, oops, um, here we go. Uh, if we launch with this flag, it looks like maybe uh, it will do it. Um, so let's, let's give that a shot just to see if uh, maybe there's a way that we can uh, make this work. And then I'll do it on the other machine and, and actually log in. Uh, I don't know if that uh, switch actually works. It's on Stock Exchange, so, you know, roll the dice. Uh, but uh, if we go to Google Chrome here, uh, let's see if we can find the startup. There's chrome.exe. Uh, so in theory, if I go ahead and close this out here, and we do chrome.exe and we do a paste for disable web security, uh, you know, off we go. So stability and security will suffer. That's a good sign. It looks like it probably uh, took our advice, right? Um, and it's doing that. Uh, so now let's see whether or not we can get to the login screen. So I'm going to go ahead and prophylactically open up the developer tools here again. That's F12 if you don't know, uh, if you want to do this at home on, on Chrome. Uh, it's also in here in the more tools uh, area, right? It's this developer tools thing here. Uh, Control Shift I, I guess also. I hit F12, but I guess it's either or. Um, so now if I type some stuff in here uh, and I click login, um, let's see if anything happens. Nope, still problematic. So we really just don't know what the access denied for this document thing is telling us here. Uh, what's the issue? If that, if it wasn't that, um, if that doesn't turn it off, you know, what is it? So let's take a look over here in, um, in the sources tab again. And uh, let's, let's bring up that line of code. So you can see here that uh, it's, it's presumably not getting the new, to the new cookie storage part of things. The other thing, I mean, I suppose we could do is the, is the this storage part. I mean, can we just, can, can we simplify this in some way? I don't know. But let's take a look at these values just, you know, as they go. So uh, window handler is not defined. Hmm. So maybe this is just a regular bug? Do you think? I don't think so. This is, I think that's just the top level being grumpy with us. I think this probably, I don't know enough JavaScript to say. I'm not a JavaScript programmer at all, right? Um, so I have no idea. But uh, I'm assuming that that's just uh, the fact that for whatever reason we're not, uh, like the exception threw out of this or something. Here's a question. Can we just get right in there and break, right? If I'm in there, can I look at it? <clears throat> Oops, didn't mean to do that. Definitely didn't mean to do that, okay. Uh, so if I break on that line, uh, no, 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 no luck there. So I don't really, yeah, like I said, I don't really understand this. This probably takes more JavaScript um, know-how than I've got. Uh, to know what's going on here. Uh, here's the this pointer, right? Which is the thing that's that's active in here. If I open it up, we can see what's on it, right? And it wants to add these two. It wants to add storage. It already added worn, which is probably why that one's there, right? Here you can see it. 
here it is. Um, and uh, it never was able to do the storage line. Now, I'm not sure where window handler, I, I don't know this syntax, this require syntax, right? Uh, this looks like it's trying to say, include this thing or something, right? But I don't, I'm not familiar with this. I've never used that in my very limited amount of JavaScript programming time, right? So what require does in general, uh, I couldn't tell you. So we might want to look up JavaScript require uh, and see what it actually does. It, it looks like, uh, I mean, as far as I can tell, it looks like it's exactly what I thought it was, which is a way to include a module. And it looks like it's maybe node.js. So in terms of the answer of why this isn't working, node.js is a very good first, first step because you know, it's Node.js. That's pretty much guaranteed to not be working particularly well. So uh, when we come in here and uh, we see that this thing presumably should have done this require, I guess this didn't actually properly do whatever Node.js nonsense was actually supposed to happen to get the window handler uh, executed. Now, again, since I'm not a JavaScript programmer, I don't know why. So uh, again, since this is kind of turning into, can we actually hack around the login to NVIDIA developer site? And when I say hack around, I don't even mean hack around like not log in. I mean, use our legitimate login with their buggy login code. I'm just gonna try uh, coming back here and seeing if I can set a breakpoint on that particular piece of code uh, in order to, and unfortunately it, it seems to have, um, uh, gotten rid of that though. Where where did that come from? Uh, I was going to see if I could set a breakpoint, and so we could just sort of step into it, you know, and see what happened uh, when we when we did that. Uh, but I don't actually know. Um, it might be that until I do login, it doesn't. Oops, not join. Uh, let's try login. Uh, all right. Uh, so when we go to do uh, our login here. Let's see, do we have uh, some information? So here's that DZ off modal iframe bit, right? Uh, that the th This is the thing that's getting uh, loaded for the login. And I'm just going through here and looking uh, to see what actually gets loaded here. Uh, so here's that initial auth zero min.js bit. It's a minified piece of JavaScript, right? It's well, it's been like kind of compressed down uh, to a certain degree anyway. Let's see about that. Here's uh, here's some of the other pieces. There's that DZ off uh, iframe part. What else we got here? Smetrics. Here's Webpack. So this is some way of, I, guess, I don't even know what this is, but I guess this is this is the way of serving stuff compressed, it looks like, as a, as a, um, as like a, a bundle of 8 billion, you know, JavaScript files uh, for, I don't, don't even get me started on that, but you know, all right. Uh, so yeah, I don't remember where we were in here. There's that uh, cross origin authentication bit. Um, where were we on the, uh, where, where were we? I don't remember where we were, uh, where I wanted to set that. Uh, here it is. So it's handler. So here's where it is for future reference. It's the webpack source helper storage handler.js. And it looks like it even remembered my breakpoint. So that's kind of awesome, right? Now, whether it actually did anything on that breakpoint, I don't know. Um, so yeah, because it should have, right? Uh, but maybe it only executes these once it gets to here. But it, it, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it should have already executed that. It doesn't look like it did, uh, which is a bit confusing. So you can see like it never actually executed this line of code according to the breakpoint. But in order for this code to work, it would have had to, right? And so I'm a little confused as to when this nominally got 
executed because all global variables should have been executed, right, before they are used uh, at very least. So I'm not super certain I understand why that breakpoint never hit. I mean, maybe that's just a bug in the debugger and it really did get called. But of course, if that never got called, that would be a pretty good uh, reason, to say the least, uh, as to why you would not um, uh, have it defined when it gets here. Because we're pretty sure at this point that it wasn't, right? Uh, it's supposed to have a window handler uh, thing in here, uh, and it definitely doesn't, right? So let's go ahead and do this one more time. And you can see that we do break here just fine, right? Uh, but wow, so their text input's pretty broken there. Um, so yeah, if we take a look at this here, I don't know, that's just the VM. That's not a meaningful location. That's just saying here, I think. Uh, so if we look at where we were evaluating this, it, it is trying to evaluate it right here. So I'm pretty certain that this never got initialized, right? But what I don't know is why it never got initialized. Because again, that looks like it should have been the case. Now let's find out um, if, if uh... well, here's, okay. So here's an interesting question. What about these other ones? The text input is horribly broken. I'm only typing W once, but it puts it there twice. <laughs> oh, the web world. So what's interesting is like, for example, this, this does a new on this. This is just like reverse engineering how this program, programming language works, right? So what's interesting is th they do a new on this one. So this require here didn't create one of these, right? In a sense, because they still had to make one of them. So this window handler, I'm wondering if there was a reason, like if, if that actually means that in order to get a window handler, does that mean you actually had to do this? Let's try this. So that's pretty interesting to me. Man, I don't know what they did. To, you can't even type in this thing. It's so broken. Uh, so let me do uh, this warn here. I'm going to do the same line as was above. So this is even more fascinating. So at this location, I cannot do warn even though they did warn that way. And they clearly it worked. So it must be that the top level can't access those things properly or something because you can see that this worked just fine or at least it seems to have worked just fine, right? So I wonder if that's even further uh, evidence, I guess, that I'm just not able to use the top level to actually do any testing on this. I don't get it. I don't get it. I really don't. So another question is, what if I just got rid of this? Can I just get rid of it? I mean, does that actually count? Is, is that, will that actually modify that? I mean, we could find out, right? Uh, 
actually, I guess, let me do that here. Oh, it already brought me up here. Uh, so here's our little, like, uh, you know, attempt to overwrite wherever we are. Uh, well, we won't really overwrite it. I guess I don't know exactly what the best way to do it. Can I do a console.log, actually, or something like that? JavaScript console output. Uh, console.log. Console.log. Uh, so if I do that... Um, I'm wondering if there's a way I can tell it I want you to do this thing. Uh, prop, you know, is there a reinterpret this file, please, kind of situation. Um, uh, but I don't know if I can. I probably can't, can I? Um, so, all right. So let's just try it. So it didn't actually allow my change, right? You can see that it's, you know, it still thinks that it's the old line here. Uh, so it doesn't quite allow me to, it doesn't quite allow me to actually replace a line of code with the line of code that I wanted. Uh, so let's see if I can do that, you know, who knows. Um, Chrome edit JavaScript and continue. So let's take a look. Uh, So it, do I just have to save it? Uh, let's see. Hmm, so that seemed to only be editing things from the top level though. Like that didn't seem to allow me to actually change this. I'll give it another shot and we'll see. Um, so let's say I do a refresh here. Uh, and, oops. You know, I also wonder what would happen if we just loaded this site directly. Um, Like if we just did that. Uh, Cause that's a lot simpler, right? Oh, hey. So even though that's pretty weird. Uh, what's, what's the error here? No, it's just a post. So even though that's pretty interesting. So, so when we use this as the only frame, because we're not in an iframe anymore, that code will work. Interesting. Again, that suggests that it is the cross site. Uh, they set the cross site flags wrong on the iframe. Because iframes have to have specific stuff set to be cross frame. Let's try that over here and see if I can actually log in. Right, instead of, of using the pop-up, if I just log in instead. 
So let's see. Uh, this iframe, there's the source. Let's grab that out. Uh, copy my username and password in. Hey, hey! I think that actually logged me in. Let's find out. Uh, so now, if I like refresh the page, am I logged in? Sadly not. At least it doesn't seem like it. <sighs> well, you know, I tried. I tried really hard. This is the this is a, a case where being knowledgeable about JavaScript would help because I'm pretty sure this is not hard to work around. Um, I just don't have that experience, right? Like. I don't know all of the ways in which people mess up their code. And so when I see a bug like that, unlike in C or something where I often have a pretty good idea of what's going on in JavaScript, I'm like, I don't know what that error comes from. Right. I have no idea because I just don't have that experience. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not fast out with the language. You know, I don't know what a require uh, directive actually does in node.js. I have no idea. Um, so let's take a look at, happened here because it did it does allow me to proceed uh, but it must not set the login cookie or it sets the login cookie but for the wrong site or something let's see here it seems like maybe like the because it goes to a register callback uh, and, uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem to have actually done anything useful for us, you know? Hmm. Hmm. What if I inspect this guy right here? Uh, and paste that in there. Ah, I did it. Okay, so let me tell you how I did it. So I did go ahead and put this in its own frame like this. I put in my username and password and did the login, which brought me to a callback but that callback didn't do anything. So I cut and pasted that callback URL into the iframe on this page. So I basically went like this, looked at this guy, right? Found the iframe here and I pasted the callback in here. That actually did set the cookie properly and now I am logged in. Ladies and gentlemen, the fine power of modern technology at our disposal. The future of software, no less. The future is me having to learn JavaScript to log into a friggin' web page. All right, let me go ahead and copy onto a thumb drive uh, this program that we <laughs> wanted to use. Oh man, there's going to be a man on Mars before the web is even barely usable. All right, let's uh, see here which one of this it's... Put it on there. And hope this works. Uh, looks like it's still writing. And now it's done. At long last, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to d I, I drag, I guess, 
the NVIDIA Insight Graphics Installer to our desktop. I think we've earned it here. We had to go all the way in and all the way back out again. Should really put vodka in this thing. Forget coffee. Uh, let's see if it works. We may have to also download uh, updated drivers. Hopefully those are available to everybody and not just uh, registered developers. But uh, well, uh, since, since this thing's got the cookie set, hopefully that, that's the only thing. At that point. This doesn't seem to be going too well. There we go. That all seems good. Uh, and again, I don't know if this includes the graphics drivers, so we may need them. I, you know what, let's go ahead and just find out which ones we even have, because I don't know. Ooh. Uh, 38813 uh, and actually let me just look at it's it's said specifically um, which version it wanted you to have here uh, required Nvidia display driver which is this one? okay so yeah we're we're like definitely not up to date here uh so we want this one let's go totally fine totally fine yeah it's cool don't worry about it bro i know how to program javascript now not really uh, so let's see if I can grab that. Uh, from here, because I am logged in over here. There it is. Yep. Perfect. So thankfully I didn't have to go through that again. It remember the cookie to thank God for cookies, right? Uh, or more specifically, I suppose, you know, thanking God. God didn't really give us cookies. Paul Newman gives us cookies. Um, so thank Paul Newman, but either way, uh, thank you, old bearded white man, uh, for, for giving us cookies because without cookies, uh, they would have had to go through that whole thing again. Although now that I know how to do it, I, I could do that pretty quickly, I suspect. All right. Will we be able to actually run this profiler before the episode is over? That's, that's the question at this point, right? But we're sort of on a mission, so I think, you know, I think we're going to make it. We've got a while. i got an hour. Uh. Okay. Off we go. Actually, I probably shouldn't have launched that from the D drive. But, uh, you know, too late now. I accidentally double clicked. Um, I'm also going to put these in here, I guess. And when this is done, I'll put it in there as well.
Hopefully our system is compatible. It's thinking about it. All right, so we got a graphics driver. That's good. A 3D vision control driver. I don't know what that is. I don't know what any of this stuff is, so let's just get rid of those. Uh, I don't want an experience and I don't want physics. So I think we're good with just graphics driver and audio driver. I think that's all we want, right? Oh, so people say I'm blocking cookies. I don't. I do block cross-origin stuff, though. Uh, but I thought we disabled that with the other uh, cross-origin part, right? Like this. So here in the settings. Uh, well, of course, actually, it doesn't matter what this one's set to, because I downloaded it. It didn't work on the other one either. Uh, Yeah, so, no, I'm definitely not blocking cookies. The thing I block is which you should always block because that's basically just advertising tracking, right? So if your site doesn't work with that thing on, you're super busted, right? Because you should never need a third-party cookie. If you wrote your web code properly, you never need a third-party cookie for any legitimate purpose, right? You're just being sloppy. But we allow full cookies from everybody else, right? Uh, and that's the same that I have it set on the other machine. And by the way, all other logins work just fine. So no, it pretty much is their code is messed. And I think the reason their code is, is messed up is because I think they're trying to do cross-origin cookie. It absolutely is cross-origin. It's a cross-origin bug. I know this because on, what, on hand, uh, the Handmade Hero site, uh, I have to, because it gets served from a CDN now, I specifically had to make that work. I'm not a web programmer and our site does cross-origin properly. Um, so I can pretty much guarantee you that it's not me, it's them. Uh, if people allow cross-origin cookies, all right. I mean, maybe you just want to be tracked by advertisers and stuff like that, but you shouldn't. And there's no legitimate reason for it. It's never something that you actually want on. Uh, because any piece of code that was written coherently can set its access control properly to make it so that that's not a problem, right? Um, it's not hard. Anyway, uh, let's see. Like I said, if I know how to do it, it can't be hard. Uh, so let's see here. It looks like we're all good. Let's go ahead and restart. Um... Hello. So every time you reinstall graphics drivers, that breaks, unfortunately. 
Uh, yeah, again, modern computing, it's fantastic. Uh, so now, in theory, after all that work, hopefully this will, will actually uh, be able to execute. Find out. Uh, so here we go. Oh, and Godling said, do you want shader debugging? I think that's only in the Insight Visual Studio Edition. Uh, I, so I, maybe they updated it. Uh, I don't know, but at least in the old version, there was no shader debugging anyway. Uh, shader debugging doesn't work on um, 1080s, on, on, well, on, on, you know, 10 series graphics cards. They didn't support shader debugging anyway. So we didn't have shader debugging. Uh, the old 600 series did. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe they added it recently. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, when, when we were, when we installed it a few, like a month or two ago, uh, it didn't, it, it couldn't debug shaders anyway. Uh, so let's see here. Here is our NVIDIA Insight graphics. If I, like, can I put that down here? Yeah. Uh, so let's see if, if we can launch that. Um, Of course, I don't know how to use it, but. Let's try, build. Then through to your handmade. That's not the directory I want. Handmade data. Uh, and that should just work, I think. Probably, hopefully, not actually sure. So, does that mean that it just couldn't connect to the process, or does that mean it couldn't send the error report? Let's hope it just means it couldn't send the error. I mean, it, that it couldn't connect to the process and that it sent the error report, I guess. I don't know what to say. Um, so what, I mean, is that it? Was that, was that the end of the... Is that the end of the fun or maybe I'll try making a project. Here's that legendary startup time. <clears throat> um, So, I 
It doesn't even look like it knows about my process. Um, do I have to link with a special something or? I should probably read the documentation. Maybe there's something obvious I'm not doing. Let's try saying new project. Handmade hero. Oh, okay, well, you know what? Let's actually try to put this in W, W, handmade. Where would this go? Handmade NVIDIA, handmade hero. So here is a, our project. It's pretty spiffy. And I'm getting a feeling that this is going to be exactly the same uh, as before. But, you know, hope springs eternal. So there's Win32 Handmade. Uh, the working directory is Handmade Data, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there are no command line arguments. Automatically connect is yes, I guess. Maybe we should set that to no and see if that helps us if we connect subsequent. Um, so that's good. Uh, oh man, so no, it was actually saying it can't send the error report. So not only is the program broken, but the thing that reports how the program is broken is also broken. Uh, boy. Well, uh, what if we set the working directory to just like build or something? Let's just look at the welcome page for a while since that's the only thing that works. It's got a nice, this is nice. I like that design. It's like a little like wireframe with a flat shaded polygons there. So here uh, we got some, I, I mean, I'm basically just, I give up at this point on the world. Valbus, as far as I know, not had the CRT. Oh, you think us, the fact that we compiled without the CRT is what makes it crash? Because it needs the CRT to be there for some reason? Leodelsky says, I think you're getting the NVIDIA experience after all. Yeah, I kind of feel like it. Maybe run the profile as an admin. So those are both reasonable theories. Um, I don't feel like having to be an admin makes a lot of sense, but we'll try it. Uh, linking with a C runtime library might be harder. I don't know if, how easy it is for us to restart linking with it. 
Um, but we can try. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and load that project. Uh, oh, but we're going to have to, so first we're going to have to subst the drive though. Because one of the things that happens is substed drives are per user. Um, so we got to subst the drive under the admin user. So here we are in admin, uh, no dice. And uh, so let's try the other thing that was suggested, like, is it possible that it's just uh, because we don't have the C runtime library installed and I don't know, uh, that could be. Here's the build up at. Um, for the C runtime library, if I just forced it to be in there, that is uh, just just this no default lib, I think, if I get rid of it. Uh, I don't know if we can compile that way. There might be a multiply defined symbol problem. I'm not sure. So that should have the C runtime library back in. Let's make sure, because we can't actually check. C runtime library is a giant bloated uh, pile of, of poop. And so let's just take a look at uh, whether it actually got stuck in there. I don't think it did. So there's Win32 handmade. And you can see that the executable size doesn't seem to have changed. So I don't think that actually did it. Um, So what I probably have to do is to put a minus MTD in here as well as get rid of the no default lib. I don't, I still think that's probably not doing it. It doesn't, am I doing something wrong? Because I feel like normally it makes the size of the executable quite a bit bigger uh, if you actually link to the C runtime library and it's not looking any bigger. Oops. Uh, so I'm not sure that it, I actually can get it to do that. I will have to see if maybe, I mean, maybe that's the case. We'll see. But I got to convince the compiler to actually do that. I guess the other question is, is it even writing it? Dependency Walker can't even load it, which is not a good sign. <clears throat> Oops. So there it is gone. We've got minus MTD specified. Uh, And no default lib is gone. Unfortunately, dependency walker, it's just a bad day for computing. It's just, you know, trashed, unfortunately. And I'm not quite sure why. Like it shouldn't take this long for depends to load an executable. It must be having trouble with something. I just don't know what. Is anybody still open here? Besides Cortana? Look at this nonsense. So I couldn't tell you why that's, I mean, that should have built with the C runtime library in there. It 
sure doesn't look like it did. Why on earth we can't run Dependency Walker, I don't even want to know. But, you know, welcome to the future. Uh, if I come in here to Visual Studio, uh, I guess if I step in, I can look to see where we are. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can see it's not it's not in here. So it's not, it's still not linking us with the uh, C runtime library. And I guess the reason for that is because even if we're specifying this switch, because nothing in here is asking for the C runtime library, uh, it just doesn't get it, right? It doesn't get pulled in. Um, so I don't know. Uh, standard IO and malloc and stuff are in here, right? I mean, there it is. So I feel like that should have pulled it in um, if we didn't explicitly turn it off, but uh, but it doesn't. So I'm not sure how to force it to link that in. It really doesn't seem to want to. Uh, and I'm not sure how to tell it, you know, to, to force it in there. Uh, because as far as I can tell, that should have told it to put it in there, right? Uh, so I don't know. I got nothing. Uh, I'm not sure how I would tell it any more explicitly. Uh, to do that. Well, that was a complete waste of time. Um, so there we go. All right, fantastic, wonderful, great, love it. Um, Windows is great, it's fantastic. Modern software is wonderful, the web, great, good. Everything's super wonderful. Um, uh, this, is, this is apparently what will be running cars in the future is this kind of mentality as well, so that's good. I can't wait to walk down the streets with that happening. Um, so, I guess that's it for Handmade Hero today. While I'm here, maybe I'll delete standard IO and malloc.h. I don't know why they were here. Were we actually depending on those in some way? These are just left over. Um, so yeah, great, good, wonderful, fabulous. I'm going to go to go ahead and go to questions and answers. Uh, I don't have any answers for you other than it's hopeless. Give up now. The future of software is doomed. Don't bother. Um, Yeah, we could try with the with the entry point, but we don't really bypass. I mean, okay, so maybe just the fact that we defined this one bypasses the entry point, but this is so it probably just maybe the linker just removed all the dead code. That could be why, right? Uh, so if we did this. I don't really know what the boilerplate for WinMain is offhand. I haven't typed it since the beginning of Handmade Hero, probably. All right. 
Uh, so that stuff will now make us not the entry point, right? So if I do this now, in fact, maybe I can do this. So that, in theory, should build it. Uh, there it is. Look, it's that's what we needed. Perfect. It's five times its size. <laughs> uh, so now it's the standard. Uh, so maybe that's fine. All right. So if I load up this situation again, and I load the project. Uh, wait, it should be. Shouldn't it be like right here? Yeah. Uh, so here's the project and I hit launch. Resounding success. Hey, that one's sent though. Before, we couldn't send it. That one we actually were able to send, so that's something. Uh, so it ain't that. It's not administrator rights. It's not because we weren't looking with a C runtime library. Anyone have any more really fun guesses? Uh, do you use anything like metaprogramming to make modern OpenGL more tolerable? Yeah, I do use a generator to generate like the function loading stuff. What is the editor you use? The simplicity of it appeals to me as someone who used to work on a Unix terminal back in the day. Uh, it's called Forcoder, uh, and it was actually written specifically uh, as like a result of Alan Webster watching me previously use Emacs which is kind of a pile these days uh, on stream. And you can get it here at forcoder.itch.io. Um, it's at the incredibly expensive, expensive price of $12, which is a bargain by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and I highly recommend it. Uh, it's programmable in C and it comes with my config as well. So if you just want to use mine, you can, but it's programmable in C so you can program it yourself in C without having to learn like Lisp or something like you would if you were using something like Emacs or some other proprietary scripting language or Python or C Sharp or whatever. Um, so if you're a C programmer and just wants to program C, you can just program C and it's pretty nice that way. Does it still work with the Visual Studio plugin of Nsight? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, let's try. So if we were to take our current builds and try it in here. Now to be fair, uh, so the answer is no. And, um, but my other question is, since we updated the graphics driver, do we have to update Nsight again? Um, and I don't know. Uh, so 
is there an update now button or do I have to turn on updates, reboot, uh, you know, update, oops, that's not what I wanted. You know, update again, I don't know, right? Uh, wait, where's the thing? There it is, extensions and updates. Um, so interestingly, it's not in here. What, what does that even mean? What is this garbage? I don't know what any of this stuff is. And I certainly didn't install any of it. Oh boy. Now I've done it. I don't, okay. I hit the, uh, what do you need to know? I hit this button, just get rid of it. I don't need you to open up some other window. Why is it, what is happening in the world? Why is it opening this? I don't need, like I just told you what to do. I don't know or want to see any of that. All right, fantastic. Anyway, I'm wondering if we have to update Insight. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna turn on automatic updates at startup. True, true, and true, hit okay. And then I'm going to see if it can update itself because we don't know if updating the graphics driver may have, that's it. Now, again, what did I say at this opening of this thing? Never update anything, right? Uh, and this is why, because everything gets worse and doesn't work. Here's the check for updates button. It doesn't do anything. Oh, yes, it does. It does right here. Get latest version. Uh, download here. It's gonna. It's gonna make me log in again. It's an update. What is wrong with you? Okay. It's fine. Insight visual. Studio. I'm scrolling down. I'm clicking downloads. I'm downloading it now. Putting the thumb drive into the machine. And now I'm copying the file over to the thumb drive. I'm waiting for the write to finish before pulling the thumb drive out so as not to corrupt the write. And now I'm placing the thumb drive back into the main machine.
So now we know that that option is completely worthless because it doesn't update itself anyway. So these can stay false and we just go to the website when we want a new version because we're going to have to do it anyway and the entire process will be manual. Good to know. All right. Are we having fun yet? Programming is wonderful. Such a great occupation. Uh, so here is my Visual Studio Edition. I am going to double click on it. Uh, I'm going to allow it to continue to destroy my development environment since everyone else has today. I don't see why it shouldn't be given a chance as well. Excuse me. Uh, so then we've got, I don't know what this HUD launcher thing is. So we can play with that. Uh, possibly we might want some that, I don't know. Uh, but let's go ahead and now see if we can do what we wanted to do before or if we're just permanently screwed now. So yeah, uh, I guess if anything, if there was anything that could convince you of why you never update your development environment, we started the day having the ability to debug our graphics and we ended the day without it. And who knows if we'll ever get it back? Probably not, but maybe, who knows? Uh, so there you have it. We have spent two hours trying to update and our features regressed. That is pretty much exactly what I said. Happens, and it happened. That's about all I have to say for today. There's really nothing else you can say. It's as if the universe just wants to reinforce the point. Don't ever touch your dev development dev environment people it can only make things worse and that is the end of that i'm not going to take any questions because there's really no point i think you pretty much saw what there is to see here maybe we'll be back next week maybe we won't maybe it's time to just take a week off because Honestly, that was a disaster, and exactly everything that is wrong with software today. We started out with the fact that Visual Studio couldn't update properly, then we had NVIDIA couldn't download stuff because they have their site set up wrong, and then the software that we try to download doesn't work anyway. So that's pretty awesome. On so many levels, everybody just out to absolutely win today. Fantastic. It's great. Um, yeah. Uh, get a day job somewhere and just kind of phone it in if you want to be a programmer. Don't actually care about software because it will absolutely destroy you spiritually uh, because literally no one else in the world is even remotely interested in doing a good job. That's it for today. I'll see you back here in maybe two weeks. Take it easy, everybody.